Are you recording now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you have to see if I'm recording again, I'll murder you. Actually, do you want to record outside? It was just pouring. No, it's not pouring anymore. It's kind of nice and breezy. Okay. In the last video, we built the thing. We set up this temperature sensor to the Raspberry Pi to read the temperature in my apartment. In this video, we're going to send that data over Bluetooth so we can read it over my iPhone. Yeah. Okay, so we're using Bluetooth Low Energy for transmitting the data from the Pi to my iPhone. So Bluetooth Low Energy is a low energy way of communicating data between devices wirelessly. So let's say we have a low powered sensor like a heart rate monitor and it has like heart rate data and maybe step count and stuff and it needs to communicate that data wirelessly to other devices. So it starts by emitting radio frequencies all over the place, advertising itself saying, hey, I'm a heart rate monitor, I have data, who wants my data? Then other Bluetooth low energy enabled devices in the area, let's say like a smartphone or a laptop, yeah, can then pick up these radio frequencies and know that this heart rate monitor is in the area and that it is capable of communicating certain bits of data. One of these devices can then choose to communicate back to the heart rate monitor saying, hey, I'd like to connect to you. I want to get some of your data. And then a connection can be established. Once that happens, the heart rate monitor and the smartphone will have this two-way connection where they can communicate back and forth with each other. And the heart rate monitor is no longer advertising itself and no other devices are going to connect to this heart rate monitor. It's just connected exclusively to this iPhone. But let's say we have a sensor like a temperature sensor. It's not absolutely necessary to have that second step. So this isn't super necessary anymore um, because we could just attach, let's say, our temperature data to this advertising data. So when this temperature sensor is advertising itself saying, hey everyone, look, I'm a temperature sensor. I have temperature data. It can also just attach its temperature data to that. So let's say it's 20 degrees, it's just going to throw that on its advertising data. That way, any devices in the area don't have to make a connection to this temperature sensor. They can just already know the temperature based on the, the advertising data. So this allows multiple devices to read the data at once, and it means we don't have to set up the direct connection between them. So we're going to, this is actually how iBeacons work. Do you know what an iBeacon is? So Apple iBeacons, they just emit advertising data about location. This is what we're going to do. We're going to, so we're going to plug this into a Raspberry Pi. I mean, do I even have the, whatever the Pi's over there? So we're going to plug this into the Pi. The Pi is going to read the data from the temperature sensor. And then the Raspberry Pi, let's plug it in. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is just going to emit the data to all the devices in the area saying, hey, it's 20 degrees or whatever the temperature is and the humidity of our apartment. So any device will be able to just listen, any Bluetooth device will listen in and know the temperature. Cool? Yep. Sweet. When a Bluetooth low energy device is advertising itself, it's just emitting 47 bytes of data to other devices. Uh, 16 of those bytes are actually used by the Bluetooth stack itself. So we're left over with 31 bytes that we can use to transmit our temperature data. I found a JavaScript library that I'm going to use that looks like it makes this advertising pretty easy. I've written some JavaScript using that Bluetooth library that I found. Here I'm setting up the advertisement data, creating a buffer that's 31 bytes long for our data. I've added a name for the temperature sensor, including an emoji, which I hope works with Bluetooth. And here I'm adding the temperature and humidity data, which I've just hard coded for now while I'm testing it out. I'll leave more details about the code in the description, but if you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Okay, so let's run this. Yay, it works. By the way, the reason it broken before is that the name of the sensor had been too long before that it actually took up too many bytes in our buffer. 
the pie should now be advertising itself with this name and the temperature and humidity that I've coded here. So I'm just going to test that using an app on my phone. So the Raspberry Pi is showing up on the first one on the list. And if I look at its advertising data, I can see the name is not showing up. I'm guessing that's because of the emoji. Um, and there's the, the manufacture data, which is the temperature data. So I'm actually going to get this working with the name. What would be a good name for the temperature sensor? Nest? <laughs> Sense like sensei. Sensei, I don't know if Charles. Sensei. Yeah, but I think. Sen. I don't know if people will get that. Yeah. How do you spell sensei? I think it's uh. Yeah, E I. Sensei. Yeah, that's the name. All right, good enough. You're welcome. Thank you. Is that all you needed from me? It works. It's a short enough name. That is all I needed from you, yeah. Do I have to buy it? Yeah, there we go. Sensei. Sensei the temperature sensor. Sensei the temperature sensei? Sure. A teacher <laughs> in martial arts. Okay. Oh well, it's called Sensei now. Its name is Sensei and the manufacturer data, those numbers, hexadecimal looking numbers, are the temperature and humidity. So we just need to make an app now, in this case an iPhone app, that can read that data and tell us what the temperature is. Actually before we do that I'm going to connect the Bluetooth to the real temperature data rather than my dummy hard-coded data. I've separated my code into a couple of files. This one's managing the Bluetooth, this one's reading the data from the sensor, and this one's just linking them up. I'm also just gonna make sure that it updates temperature every second. Yay! So this data should now be emitting through the Bluetooth, which it's not. Now it should work. Okay, there was an error at the beginning, but I think it's working. There's our sensei, and hopefully that should be our temperature data. So now, we just gotta make an iPhone app so that we can read that data. What should I call the iPhone app? What's wrong with sensei? All right. Sensei, how do you spell sensei? I. E. Yeah. I. E. Sure. Sensei, E, I, damn it. That took a while. And that's no way that's right. It says it's 29 degrees and 35% humidity. That's not my code though, that's the temperature sensor. Or it just happens to be 29 degrees in Vancouver, which... What is the temperature in Vancouver? What's the temperature in Vancouver? 22. It's about 22 degrees outside. Hot. I don't know, close enough, 29 degrees. As long as it's consistent, I guess. So I should probably explain how the code in the iPhone app works. We're using Apple's core Bluetooth framework, which allows us to listen for any Bluetooth low energy devices that are advertising their data. Once we find any devices that are advertising, we just check their name, if their name matches Sensei in this case, we're then just grabbing the temperature data and the humidity data from the advertising packet. Then we're sending that data over to the view controller that's just presenting it in those labels so we can see what's going on. Right now it's plugged into the mains, but I want to plug it into a battery. But the only battery I have is taped to this shitty robot I tried to build one time. Um, so I'm just going to plug it into that. 
So now the temperature sensor is plugged in. I just gotta start the Bluetooth again. Okay. Fuck. So the sensor's mobile. The app is made. I'm still not convinced that it's 28 degrees in my apartment. At least if it's consistent, I won't care if it's accurate. So I'm gonna put it in the freezer and see if it at least gets colder. Now at least if it gets colder in there, we'll know that it kind of works. I wonder if the Bluetooth... Crap, the sensor came disconnected. It's probably the most fragile thing I've ever built. Damn it. It keeps getting disconnected every time I put it in the freezer. You can see it changing on the screen. And on the iPhone. Yeah. Well, it's going down faster than I thought. It's not very humid in our freezer. Alright, so it's getting colder in our freezer, so at least it's consistent whether it's accurate or not. I don't know what to do now, I guess it's done. Should we take it out of the freezer? Do you want to leave it for a little bit and see what it does? I have a feeling it's just gonna get cold and stop working. Okay, so take it out then. It's not a bad looking app, right? Yeah, it's fine. I like the name. We need to find a permanent place for this now. It's just gonna tell us the temperature always. What do you think? Like in the middle? No. <laughs> no. No? No. Where should it go? Uh, on your desk somewhere. Like up here? Uh, sure. That looks pretty stable. Yeah. Is it still working? No, a disconnect. No, it's good. Dead. <sighs> good. Good. Dead. Dead, you fucking see me. Uh, work in the freezer. Good. I can't just stand. Still good? Yep. Okay, no one touch it ever. That there we go, we've got a temperature sensor. We've got a screen that we can read it from, we got an iPhone app. And you have a hungry pregnant wife. Okay. Should we eat? Should I turn this off now? Probably. <laughs>